Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar event. My name is Joshua. I'm going to be your presenter today. It's promptly 12 Eastern time here. Uh, we're going to get started on our topic momentarily, a few technical things before we do. Uh, we're here till about 12.20 Eastern time, so about the next 20 minutes. Um, our topic is the uh, 941 creation, generation, filing, whatever you decide to call it, producing the 941 in the new church windows payroll today. So let's go ahead and dive in. So whether you're printing the 941 form and mailing it into them or whether you're choosing to pay our third party tax documentation filing company, Atrix, we're going to be using these same instructions uh, it's the same process. It's just whether you choose to e-file during the generation or whether you're printing. We're going to talk about printing it today. Uh, you'll see the, the, the ads and the, and the links to be able to choose to e-file if you wish. I believe it's $9.95 per filing for the 941 through Atrix. I can't say that with any educated uh, basis because I've never e-filed with them but it's my understanding from other technicians that that is what that is. Still not a bad price, but we get it. Most churches were willing to just go ahead and print it and send it in. That's what we're going to do with that, okay, today. So to access this, we're going to go into reports export in the top left. You cannot access the tax forms by going to the little reports printer icon here in the center. Everybody should be able to see my, my little uh, uh, icon there my mouse moving around that, you cannot access it there. You can only get to it going up to reports export here in the upper left, and then below that to the right tax reports and choosing tax forms. Okay, when we click on that, it's now opening the interface between church windows and Atrix. We've got heard a lot about this, folks. A lot of folks are kind of not sold on the Atrix interface yet as a technician who has used the old payroll software for 20 years, I am. So hopefully that will become more clear here why we really like this now. All right, so this is now sort of talking about the information here that's on our very first page of our document about desktop users versus cloud users, all right? If you're a Church Windows web user and you get this updater, you must click no to this, all right? because this is controlled by the cloud hosting company. The username and their password that they're asking for is not your church Windows logon. It's not your cloud logon. It's a computer or server administrator password that is only managed by Summit Hosting or Cloud9 or RDI. So when you're on the cloud and you get this, you have to click no. All right. If you're a local desktop user, you may not even be getting the username and password prompt. You may just be getting the screenshot that you're seeing there on the upper right, middle right, that says, do you want to allow the program to make changes to your computer? Now, and you'll click yes to that, okay? That what that does is it goes out into the Atrix system and it looks for any new updated forms or what have you to bring those in, okay? And uh, for the purposes of our webinar, we're going to imagine this is our our cloud set up and we're going to click no. It still opens up the forms, all right? As we see here, we do have our, our 2023 941 Schedule B941V report, the very first report in the list, all right? We have the current form. For cloud users or Church Windows web users that may be asking the question, we're ensure, I mean, of themselves, of course, is we at Church Windows are ensuring that you have the most recent forms available anytime you need to go in and run those. So before your, say, second quarter 941 forms are due here, you know, in July, we're going to make sure that you have with Atrix the most current form available. I mean, we're making this more regular than that, but we're just going to make, we're always making sure you have the most recent forms. Okay. If you are a local desktop user, not cloud, and you are, excuse me, um, getting a uh, username and password prompt, folks, you will need to get in touch with your computer administrator or technician, somebody who can help you locate that username and password prompt, uh, that those 
administrative credentials for the computer to allow that Atrix updater to run. Uh, frankly, they should be just allowing it to run uh, for anybody. It doesn't hurt for it to just allow permissions into that Atrix software folder and to ensure it's updated every time. If your network administrator or technician has questions about it, please have them contact us. We're happy to discuss that with them, okay? But if you get that Atrix updater prompt on local desktop, go ahead and click yes on it. It does sometimes take a couple minutes, folks, to get, those, get that update completed. So you might need to be patient before you decide to print or then go to run your form. All right, so we've kind of added, you know, chewed up a little time on just that section here. But folks, this producing of this 941 form is simply not that complex, okay? So we're gonna choose the form. You can choose reporting period down here at the bottom, but all that does is limit the forms that you're seeing on the left-hand side. What you're really here to choose is over on the right, the appropriate quarter. So here I'm going to choose quarter one, okay? And then we're going to click print. We're going to get this prompt of, just like we did in the old payroll, of this, the total deposits for the period is, is this amount correct? It's important that we discuss this for a minute, okay? Because if your deposits are under 2,500, you're considered by the IRS to be a quarterly depositor. We've heard about this a lot. Some of you may be depositing quarterly. So if your deposit is not yet made for that quarter, you're going to choose no, and you're going to leave the amount as zero, so the form then populates with the amount due. Then you can go on to EFTPS and post that payment amount, okay? But this is only if you have not deposited anything for the quarter, okay? If you are a monthly depositor or semi-weekly depositor, you're just going to go ahead and confirm it, and you're simply going to click yes. Okay, That's important because we've had a lot of confusion from folks who are quarterly depositors. Well, I haven't deposited this amount yet. Great. Just choose no and enter zero, and then press process the report Okay, on the figure below. But we're going to continue to support our monthly or semi-weekly deposit schedule here by simply clicking yes, okay? And now we're on page two of the document that it talks about, you know, the form, choosing the appropriate quarter, and then verifying your 941 deposit. That's the section where I'm kind of working with right now, okay? Some of you may even get a prompt at the bottom of page two there about your local taxes not having been set up correctly, okay? If that's the case, you need to go into the local taxes under, say, payroll, sorry, data setup, local taxes, and then choose the local tax, click edit, and typically on the right-hand side to the right of the state, that tax district is not populated, okay? Typically, you have just have to choose that, click finish, that, and then do that for all your local taxes. That fixes the problem. If it does not, we need you to contact us and uh, our support technicians will assist, okay? Won't take long. All right, back to our tax forms. We're gonna generate this uh, 941 form for quarter one again. We're gonna say no, and we're gonna choose the form. We're gonna choose Q1, click print, and yes on our tax deposit. We're not getting the local tax message because we've already got it set up. We're back to our document here on if you're cloud users, you have to choose continue expired. If you are a desktop or network user locally, you'll choose automatic update, all right? For the purposes and expediency of our demonstration or webinar today, we're just going to click continue expired. We have the current form. Then on the bottom of page three there, it is showing some screens that we are not gonna be seeing on our webinar today, okay? Why? Because we've already gone through this process. When you verify the EIN tax identification number information listed there on page three, and you go to the next window about how, you know, what type of multiple or single payroll data files are you using and answer those questions, Atrix recalls this information, all right? So you'll confirm the tax ID. That would be the screen that would open up next. Then on, you'll click next again. It'll say, are you doing one multiple, one pi, payroll data file? Basically, you're using one installation of payroll for the same tax ID or two. 
Most of you are going to be single. You'll choose next. Then it confirms your company information, church name, contact information, church address. You'll simply enter that information or edit it if it's wrong and click next. And then on the next page after that, you'll choose I am filing for my company employer. These should be the defaults on most of these. And then when you click next, it opens up your state and local tax items. You may have to complete, say, a local or state tax ID before it will allow you to process into the form itself. Okay? Just letting you know that you may have to complete that. But there is an option to edit that at or click add or edit when you're at that state and local tax items to, to uh, get to completing the 941 form. Okay? I'm sorry, folks. I can't get away past this to get there. But if you use these pages on this document, um, and once you've produced the 941, again, it should not be prompting you for again, of these in future, much like you've seen now. You, it goes, okay, I know this church's information. I've got it. They've confirmed this. They've not indicated anything's changed or the software or their in updates haven't noticed any changes. It should not prompt you for that again. Um, so then we would click Next, and now it opens up our processing report window. All right? And... So this is, I've done, folks, dozens of these this year already, okay? I am virtually as comfortable doing these 941s now in the new payroll as I was in the old payroll as well. And you will be too. So one of the things that I often advise folks look at is look at the yellow or the bars in the upper left-hand corners of these Atrix screens. Everything that's shown here under the report steps, the page, the dialog box in the center, is what is in the upper left-hand corner. Review and edit, my copy, federal copy. In the step report steps, review and edit, my copy, federal or state copy. Okay? All you're doing is confirming that that's what's occurring. All right? So we click OK on that. You can also tell it not to show you that message again. We're not going to do that. Now it pops up with a dialog box that, as it points out in the middle of that page there, about please complete the red fields. This is important. So we click on that, and notice now it's, it's well, look up there, it's saying right up here, field help. If the total reported taxes for the look back period is more than $2,500, but less than $50,000, you're a monthly depositor. This is new, folks. I've not seen this from Atrix. Check this box, enter your tax liability for each month in the quarter. Well, we're just going to X out of that. But what it's referring to down here in the red fields is, if we notice down here at the bottom left, it's asking us, check one. Line 12, if your tax deposits are less than 2,500, if it's more, you're either monthly or, or semi-weekly. We've gotten so many calls about this is many churches have called and they've said, well, we're a monthly depositor and yet it's only allowing us to choose the first box as quarterly. Well, the question we ask is, what is your total tax liability for the period? And if they tell us that it's even one penny less than $2,500, Atrix forces them to choose quarterly. Don't worry about it. Don't overthink it, folks. You just check the first box, process the form, print it, and send it in. You can still go ahead and deposit your money with the EFTPS monthly. Trust me, the government is going to take your money whenever you decide to pay it to them. You know, even though technically you could get away with depositing it quarterly if you wish, if your deposits are less than 2,500 total for the quarter, okay? But don't fret. It's completely acceptable. It's their processes, their policies. So just check line box 16 for if your deposits are less than that. In this case, ours are more than 2,500 and our deposit schedule is monthly. So we're going to simply put a check mark in monthly. Notice now it's populating with all of my all of my month's deposits for the quarter based on what for the for the period for the quarter that I had paid and I've confirmed those are right. I'm now going to go to the next in the upper left hand corner here to jump down to page 3 and if you did not complete the um contact information, it is going to require you to fill in the name, title, and uh, phone number information here manually. Okay, 
So we're going to just key in there, 614, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There we go. Well, wrong number. My fault. Fat fingered it there. There we go. It's got what it needs. It's now jumped us back up to page one, confirming the church name. There may be, folks, depending on your deposit schedule, like if you're semi-weekly, you may have to adjust or enter under line seven fractions of cents, okay? Maybe. It will not allow you to process it until it's right, okay? But if you look on page two down here and it shows an overpayment and it's just a penny or two, depending on what the rounding error works in at, works out to, you may have to enter under line seven either a positive or negative value so that gets, you know, so that information matches or is accurately entered, okay? But it will not allow you to process it to next, all right? But then now all my red fields are gone, it's set. I'm now going to click on next step at the top center. Now notice it's saying, yep, I'm agreeing to this. It now moves my bar from review and edit over to my copy. So now you can click the print icon and it allows you to now send it to your, say, printer. You know, whatever your printer is, this is for the church's record copy, okay? And so you would click OK and it would print it. All right, and so it's, we're not, it's opened it and snag it. Um, but it would, let me see if I can bring that up. Yeah, see, so now here it shows do not file record copy. This would be for the church's records only, not one to file with the IRS. All right, so we're just confirming you that's what this looks like when you physically print it. A lot of folks say, well, this isn't a fileable copy. That's right, it's not. It's for the church's record. Once you grab that off the printer, you're going to go to next step again. And it's going to try to sell us something through Atrix. We're just going to close that. It's now giving us the option to either e-file or print. And we're now going to choose the print button again. And now I'm going to print my hard copy that I will then send in to the IRS. Again, sending it to my printer. And it's sending it to my Snagit. So it's now going to open that. Now, this is notice it doesn't say not re no longer says record copy, do not file. I can physically send this to my printer and then put that in the, in the mail and send it into the government, okay? That's your official copy. I strongly recommend not responding to this question of did you complete processing the report until you've grabbed the report off the printer, okay? Now we know that it did print successfully or I've saved it, I'm going to go ahead and say yes on that. Now it takes us back to our tax forms list. If I need to access this, access this folks, I can now go back under history. So if I click history now, it takes a few seconds. We're going to go a minute long here, folks. I apologize. Uh, we're just going to click cancel. And it should open up my list of previously completed forms. There it is. I've done this for numerous webinars and events, but notice here they are. So right here, May 9th, there's my Schedule B, 941. I can choose it and click View or Print, Edit or Remove, your choice. But it's there. You don't have to go through it again. Okay, that, folks, is where I am going to leave our topic for today.